good evening again, or good day, good morning. It's Professor Resnick again. Today I want to talk about uh, two interesting things. One is the connection to what we have been uh, doing uh, heretofore in a concept called modernism, and also its connection uh, to another concept, which you probably have run into, postmodernism. Modernism is a way of thinking that asserts that particular ideas or particular kinds of tools can be used uh, by uh, human beings to enable those human beings, those knowers, to understand what is really going on um, in the world or what is really going on in, in, in nature. Now these tools may be mathematics, um, say geometry in, in economics or algebra in economics. Uh, there may be particular kinds of painting uh, um, in, in art. Uh, there may be particular kinds of uh, grammar in language. Uh, there may be rationalism and empiricism in philosophy. So whatever they are, these particular tools are asserted to be necessary for a knower to conquer time and space by revealing to the knower what is universally true, that conquers space, um, and what is eternally uh, true, that conquers time. So modernism is a way um, of thinking that searches for and finds the absolute truth. Some philosophers have linked modernism to despotism and tyranny. Um, and again, that person I mentioned to you the last couple of times, Foucault, is one who has argued that what occurs in modernism is that the few have been able to transform their particular set of tools and the knowledges produced with those tools into the theorizations or discourses or what he calls the formations of the day that order everybody else's behavior. That's why he's such a controversial and interesting thinker across the 20th century. Their ideas, their tools, order our behavior because these other individuals assert that their tools and their ideas are the true discourses, the true theories of the day. So, if it's the truth, if, they, you know, if one accepts that assertion, then those true theories and tools dominate and can eliminate all other and different ways of thinking and, and different ways of using tools that are determined not to be true or not to be reasonable when compared to the true discourse of the day. Note the implications here for Marxian theory, since that's been deemed not to be true, and the tools of Marxian theory, its value theory, not to be uh, 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 correct. And hence it gets demoted, gets demoted because other ways of thinking are asserted to be the, the truth. It's the lesson of Foucault. So rather than having um, a reason um, and uh, experience liberate human beings from ignorance, which was the hope of the Renaissance, wh in which modernism grew up, they are used to force individuals, that is reason experience, are used to force individuals into accepting the declared true discourse of the day. So the few use their power, in one way or the other, to make the majority's thinking conform to the ideas of the few. So they're despots in that sense, the few. Instead, we should acknowledge the different discourses that human beings uh, produce with their different relative truths, yielding their different determinations on our lives, the lesson of, of Mr. Rorty. And that's all we ever have. We have all these different truths and these different consequences. And that's what we need to be aware of and conscious of so that we can choose amongst them based upon their different consequences on our lives, not based upon that one is true and is not true, because there's no way, as we just have shown in the last two presentations, to go about ascertaining that. Rather, we have these different truth claims, these different consequences, and that's what we choose amongst that's what we have to recognize, and that's what we have to evaluate. But we always have to recognize and evaluate these, that these different, uh, uh, these different consequences are always occurring within a particular theory, because there's no way to step out of that. So the way we 
re uh, uh, evaluate the different consequences is always relative to a particular theory. I want to now move and discuss more this notion of overdetermination, this notion of dialectics, and Mo Marx's own uh, uh, presentation of, uh, of his method, uh, which I've asked you to look at. The notion of overdetermination, uh, which we've talked about, refers uh, to how something exists. So, I'm going to use a different word, how something is constituted. And it exists, or it is constituted, as a site of different determinations that literally combine together to produce it. So I want to put on the whiteboard, uh, uh, again, a diagram which I put on a couple of uh, uh, presentations ago and explain this notion of overdetermination. So let me turn to this. The idea is that in the world there's an infinity <coughs> of different, I'm going to call them processes after Marx. And I'm going to divide them again into these four categories. And this is arbitrarily. You can divide them any way you want. I'm going to use this particular kind of taxonomy. So economics, again, to remind you, <coughs> has got to do with the production and dissemination of wealth. Politics has got to do with the production and dissemination of ordering of human behavior. Culture has got to do with the production and dissemination of all the different meanings that we produce about life. And of course, nature has got to do with all the biological, chemical, and so forth changes that occur in life. So the argument is that the society or the world, the, the, the term that was used in Marx's day, materiality, reality, so these are all synonyms, is a result of the coming together of these different political, economic, cultural, and natural determinations. So we have the economic. We have the political. Economic processes, production, dissemination of wealth, political processes, the ordering of human behavior, the laws and the rules that we establish in society, all the cultural processes, how we think and the different forms of our thinking, and of course, I don't want to leave it out, all the natural processes. Sun up in the sky, rainfall, blah, 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 blah. All those come together and literally create in here society. That dot is the site of all these different causes these different determinations. Okay, that's the notion of overdetermination. There's an infinity of them. So as I told you before, the, the prefix over is a poetic way of trying to say there's an infinity of these determinations. So what's true for society is also true for anything in society, any person, any institution, anything we can think of using this, this notion of causation is a site, a locus of these different causes that come together and literally create it. Let's use another term. We can say that the political, economic, and cultural <coughs> and natural processes are the conditions of existence of a particular site, in this case, society. So we can say that in the, that in the United States today, what are its conditions of existence? Well, they would be the political, the natural, the economic and, of course, the cultural processes that come together to literally create the society, the United States. Okay. What's true for the site society, in terms of this notion of overdetermination, is again true for all of these processes. So if we just look at, let's take economic, if we ask how this thing is constituted, how it exists, well, it exists, of course, as the result of the impact of society on it, but also as politics and culture and nature. And we can do the same for any one of these. So if we ask how politics exists, 
it, the economics, and of course, natural, and of course, society, and of course, cultural. Well, you can see that this is a mess. So from the perspective of overdetermination, if I continue to do this, I'm going to have an infinity of these different crossing lines. And that's what the overdetermination asserts, that this society is a mess, mess of, it's a chaotic entity of these interacting determinations. And then you ask, well, <laughs> what do you do as a human being when you're confronted with this mess? What we do then is we choose one, at best, set of processes to begin to understand the mess. Some people choose economics, other people choose politics, other people choose nature, physicists, other people use, choose culture, music. These are the different entry points that theorists deploy to begin to bring order and understanding to theorize to explain the mess.